Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Hendra Gamaya, and I'm the Exec Director for Medical Services for Country Health SA. Um, I'd like to thank the Health Strategy Committee for organising this afternoon and for inviting me here to present what's going on in country. So I had absolutely no intention of being here today at all, um, well, at least in person, and rather I was going to present from Kangaroo Island where I'm due to talk in a, a couple of hours. Um, and it seemed very appropriate to present via video conference considering the, the topics we're talking about. Um, however, unfortunately, my house was flooded quite severely last night, which I have had to be dealing with this morning because conveniently my husband just disappeared right at the beginning of that clear up and so I, I missed my flight to Kangaroo Island. So anyway, cut a long story short, um, um, we've juggled the day around and I'm here and I'm very pleased to be so. So I'm going to talk to you about how Country Health is using digital health to support clinical care in our hospitals and at home. We've compiled a video, which is a very Country Health thing to do, but we've compiled, compiled a video that shows how we are doing this. And um, we'll start that in a second. Now, looking around the room, I am aware that some of you will have seen some of this footage before because we showed some of it at one of the SA Health learning events a few months ago. However, we have expanded on our, our previous offering to provide a more comprehensive view of some of the technology that's being used in our space. Um, and also to highlight some of the possible advantages, not sorry, adva not advantages, advances. There's lots of advantages, but the possible advances um, that we were going to see in the future. So I hope you enjoy what we've put together. And more importantly, I hope that it inspires you. Let's look at how technology can make a difference to you and your patients and how we can work together to provide better results for clinicians, for patients and for the whole health system. Across South Australia, from the city to the most remote of locations, clinicians are using technology to deliver faster diagnoses, ensuring those who need treatment get it, but also helping patient flows so that we are only admitting people to hospital who really need to be there. In the area of renal disease and in particular dialysis services in country South Australia, we've got well over 100 patients scattered over a dozen uh, dialysis units, many seven, eight, nine hours drive from Adelaide. So what um, teleconferencing and telemedicine allows us to do is, is engage with those patients and the staff uh, treating them at a distance, so from my office here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital I can see individual patients, I can talk to staff members, we can look at, at individual patients uh, either as a whole person or in close up, we can share screens for example of results, x-rays. And what effectively that allows us to do is deal with problems at a distance, uh, save uh, the patient uh, perhaps having to come to Adelaide and, and help get things uh, happening. And, and also the other way, it allows us to identify issues early and, and set in train perhaps uh, investigations either locally or, or, or make plans for subsequent uh, trips as they're needed. That's the whole point of it, is to allow patients to, to not drag down to Adelaide. The idea of someone driving for seven, eight hours to Adelaide to sit and see me for 20 minutes and then turn around and drive seven, eight hours to go home is just silly if we can deal with the issues over video conference. And I was playing cards when I had the stroke. We finished playing cards at midnight and I went to walk out the door and that was it. Next thing I woke up in hospital. Often the specialists are not located in the local area, so they need to be sourced in Adelaide, which is where telehealth can assist. So the nurse is there to support the client through the telehealth assessment, and I'm on the other end and we can proceed through interpretation of those assessments done with the nurse. Chatting to Zoe over the uh, daily test was just like talking to somebody across the table from me. There's no, no stress, no the ease was that. Uh, it was just like a normal conversation with uh, another person, so it just made you feel at ease. Being able to access a clinic via telehealth allows the clients to access specialist assessments in a timely way. They're not having to incur the costs or the stress associated with travel or being away from home. If we hadn't had the teleconference down here, would have meant that I would have had to travel to Adelaide, make an appointment, um, family would have had to come there, had to get accommodation, and it would have been 
astronomical. Um, they're just too much stress. The latest developments of tablet-based home services, such as telemonitoring and home-based tele-rehab, along with advancements in point-of-care testing, is changing and improving lives. We use a unique combination of blood tests at the point of care, which we call point of care pathology, with digitally based ECGs to provide the essential information to determine whether a patient is at high risk of having a heart attack or complications. For patients who live in country areas who experience chest pain and potential heart attack, time is really of the essence in accessing care. Traditionally, patients in country areas have been at a significant disadvantage and the mortality rate has been about 1.7 times that of the city. Using a combination of point-of-care testing, sophisticated doctor's paging and specialist advice, we've been able to close that differential in terms of their heart attack outcomes. The unique thing about the point-of-care systems that we've developed in South Australia is their integration right into the clinical coalface in our country hospitals, whereby we train our nursing staff to be able to do the tests and we provide the best available instruments and we are able to provide quality assurance so that both the local GP and the treating specialist remotely have great confidence in the results that are obtained in very short time frames. One of the great benefits of telehealth is that we can provide specialist expertise to everyone in the whole state uh, rather than just people in Metro Adelaide. It's well demonstrated that if you have an expert assessing a stroke patient, the decision about treating or not treating is made much quicker. We are on call 24 hours of every day and we have telehealth links to nearly every hospital in the state. This way we can uh, have a look at the patient directly and determine are they the sort of patient that needs to be retrieved or are they the sort of patient that can stay in the country town. Each minute in stroke, 1.9 million brain cells are lost. So if we make these decisions faster and treat patients quicker, we can save millions of their brain cells. This means that people can get back to work, they can get back to their hobbies, they can care for their families. Uh, we reduce the burden on society and reduce the disability for these patients long term. Technology is integral for how we do our work. The ability to send a retrieval team takes time. It takes an asset like a helicopter or a fixed wing plane. All of that takes time to get going. We want to be able to give advice and clinical advice to the right people in the right time frame. Using such things as video conferencing allows us to link up immediately, see the patient, know what we're dealing with and give the answers to the clinicians who are looking after the patients in a very short time frame. The picture paints a thousand words, it's probably the best way to put it. And whilst uh, if you're listening on the, the telephone line, you don't sometimes understand what kind of severity you're dealing with with the patient. By seeing the, the patient on the screen, that just gives us that understanding of, of what needs to happen and when it needs to happen. An example of how the system has helped is in the case of Stuart, a farmer who sustained burns injuries on a property near Maitland. I had a farming accident on the 4th of April uh, last year, west of Maitland, on a, a friend's property helping burn canola rows. We were bouncing along and I was just holding it, dripping out flames, and the next thing all I had was uh, the handle in my hand, and it actually snapped, um, and the whole canister, we just filled it up, um, hit the ground, and as I jumped off the trailer, the wheel ran over it, and uh, squirted me head to toe full of fuel. So, um, yeah, I was alight within about a second, and uh, yeah, it burnt from the, the bottom up. Maitland Hospital was really good, but they, they didn't have the facilities, they only had enough to sustain me and get me pain relief and dress my dressings because they were swelling up with fluid at the time, and then the Royal Flying Doctors air evacuated me out of Maitland Airport um, to Adelaide, to the Adelaide Airport, and then the ambulance to to the Royal Adelaide to the Burns Unit and that night I was in the theatre and, and I don't remember much until I, I woke up the next morning. I'm uh, pretty lucky to be alive and I went back to Maitland Hospital in York Peninsula and the staff there we'd organised before me going home. They'd um, talked to me about it and uh, about telehealth and we're doing that every day with my um, dressings as well because we're using silver dressings to keep the infection out. And it was, it was easy, we just organised it by a date and I'd go with my wife shopping and, and telehealth would be on this time, a huge big TV. We could see them, they could see us. 
and I could turn around, they could zoom in on my burns and check out how they're all healing, the, the colour of the actual scabbing on it, see how the skin was healing. We are seeing amazing results from all over the state. There are more than 60 public hospitals spread across South Australia. We need to be smarter about how we deliver our services. SA Health has already made huge improvements to patient care by using technology to make one-on-one -on -one contact. We need to look at how we can build on and expand our existing technology-based services, as well as explore new opportunities to leverage the great advances being made in IT. New technologies continue to emerge and develop every day, both from within health and from other unrelated industries. We are seeing examples of how new technologies can be adapted and embraced by the health system to provide alternatives to the traditional methods of delivering care. In Western Australia, work in the fields of augmented reality and holograms is progressing to enhance in-home patient care. The healthcare provider projects the clinician into a patient's home to speak and work with the patient, enabling that patient to remain at home and be cared for in their own environment rather than coming into hospital. The development of robotics continues to advance. We are seeing the use of small robots in aged care services, being used to engage the residents, getting them moving and exercising. The use of wearables and apps for both preventative healthcare and early diagnosis continues to grow. Wearables are helping consumers monitor and improve their own health status while capturing huge amounts of data that can be used to make decisions about their health care or even for future research. Outside of health, the use of drones has expanded rapidly over recent years, and we are now starting to see benefits of this in healthcare. Overseas, drones are being used to deliver blood to remote locations. Locally, delivery systems are only just beginning to emerge, and we need to consider how we can best use this technology for the benefit of our patients. So the challenge is there for us all. We have come so far, but there are endless possibilities with the technology we have and with the new developments that are yet to come. How do we ensure that South Australia's health system in both country areas and metropolitan Adelaide are embracing these technologies and making the most of what they can offer us? This is the question that we need to answer together. So just to, to close off before we actually do some work in our groups, um, we as a state need to consider how we can progress the use of technology to support clinical care. Um, this is the way of the future. We need to look at the current programs in country health and develop their use further across country and across the metro setting. We need to look at this existing technology and work on how we can use it and expand its use to provide further programs that support our patients. We need to look at technology that is not being used in South Australia currently and see how it can be adopted or whether it can be adopted within the state. And some of this technology may be being used in healthcare elsewhere and in other times it might not. And finally, for those of you who really are futuristic thinking, we need to be considering the technology that isn't even here with us yet and preparing ourselves for this. I've heard it say that there are many barriers to um, progressing the digital health program here in SA. However, I don't see any of these barriers as being insurmountable. And I believe that together we can find solutions to help us progress. IT limitations and bandwidth restrictions are often cited as issues. And it is true that these provide major challenges for our state and we will have to work on a way to navigate through them. Acceptance of new ways of delivering healthcare by both clinicians and the community and the cultural transformation required for these models to progress is most certainly something we need to continue working on. And finally, working together across jurisdictions is something that we should never lose focus on in order to be able to deliver the best outcomes for all of our communities. And we need our clinical champions, many of you have, are in the room, to be driving this for us. I believe the only real limitation 
is perhaps our imagination and our ability to believe that what was once impossible is now possible. By changing our mindsets and collaborating together, we here in South Australia are capable of becoming leaders in the field of digital health. And I hope that what I have shown you here today has inspired you and led you to have a similar view. Thank you.